All right, Leah wants to know, what are your thoughts on ghosts? Do you guys have any ghost stories, paranormal experiences you can share? Uh, I watched The Twilight Zone a few times. I don't believe in ghosts. I do. Dave has a uh, it's a It's a long story, though. I don't like where this is going. No, it's not. It's not anything. It's actually what? an interesting story. You told it to I, me partially the other day. I so. thought, I th- he told it to you partially, so just that like means he didn't get to the punchline. Well, that just, <laughs> no, I just <laughs> didn't have the. Whole no, there is not setup. showering, or it's going <laughs> to be rape, or Bill Cosby, or his oh, first mom of all, didn't get to hug him anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I, I, first of all, my humor may be a bit raunchy at times, mm-hmm. but I am a good person. I know. Mother says, Ish. Mother even though says. she's been dead for a while, I still, still have her garments in my room. Well, you still talk to her, too, which yes. is disturbing. Mm. She sleeps. There's a pillow next to me. With he dances her around with her corpse. I do. It luck Tonight, Mother, let's do the waltz. Tonight. You love that song, don't you, Mother? Uh-oh, somebody's kissing Mother. All right, so the story. Stop, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Frigga Mortis. All right, go ahead. Your ghost story. <laughs> Which story? Ghost story. Not about oh. Mrs. Rigor Mortis. Tell me oh. your ghost story. Yeah, no, for real? Yeah. All right, there's this place in... Hold on, first, let me ask you. This, this. is real. Were I'm you on kidding. drugs when this happened? No, I'm no. sober. Okay. Uh, there's actually a clip of part of it online in the beginning, but... All right, so me and uh, a comedian and another guy uh, were at a house in Westland, Michigan, where the, it was supposedly haunted and had been on, like, 10 different shows involving hauntings. Okay. So we're downstairs and like they have like all this equipment and we talked to the lady and the the two women that started this organization were uh, one woman's son had died and she wanted to contact him. Yeah. Bad idea. Okay. Yeah, which I understand Gerald believes is a demon. Yes. Well, also just because she was just so whiny. Let it go. <laughs> I know, right? Make a new one and do better. Yeah. So I... Uh, wait, what? So... <laughs> We're uh, in the basement and everybody's sort of like with flashlights and like a faucet turns on and some other stuff where I'm like, oh, that's bright. Why, when you said with flashlights, people couldn't see, you did the motion of milking like teats. Oh, like this? They're all like, they all had flashlights. This is not the international symbol for flashlight. Well, we were all flashlighting. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And then... <laughs> this, this, so yeah. I'm flashlight. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you started it. <laughs> no, you started it. Okay. You saying flashlights uh, and you're milking a cow. The way I'm picturing is I have one of these like Ghostbusters readers in one hand yeah. and then oh, a flashlight yeah. in another. Okay. So I'm doing that, and I'm like, this is stupid. So I go outside, and I smoke a cigarette, and I walk back in. Now, there's no cameras in this room. There's nobody in this room. Everybody's oh, downstairs. They're still filming. Never any cameras. There's nothing going on. Right. I'm just telling. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, Mr. Size 12. So I come in, and this this woman walks in whose house it is, and she starts walking. And like before this, I walk in, and there's like this flash, and it's like this weird flash and on the on the wall, and it looked to me like... Well, you know what? I'll end it on that. But it was bizarre. What so, did it look like? It looked like someone's pe- were you being flashed by a subway flash. No, it a- looked like a guy with a mustache and also a, a, an American bald eagle. It was weird. It was like this, like just sudden thing on. The- it looked wait like he had a tattooed bald eagle, or he looked like a bald eagle slash guy with a. Mustache. It looked like a bald eagle slash guy with a mustache. Yeah, like real quick. So like, like the blue like, Muppet eagle. Yeah, and they had a picture of it, okay. and so I'm sitting there and. Uh, or they, I didn't have a picture of it, but that's the flash that I saw. So this woman's walking through, there's nobody else here. She was walks in to grab her coat and the radio's on and it just stops and it's, it starts making this white noise, but it's using actual, it's that. And <laughs> it, that's the ghost who raped me. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is the eerie way. I am Martin Scorsese, a bird. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the West Craven house. <laughs> Okay. What's that? It was that chick with the big eyebrows from Requiem. Jennifer Connelly. Thank you. That's Mr. Connelly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the little. So there's you know, like a, everything else about Jennifer Connelly makes up for it that I don't even see the eyebrows. So there's this radio and it just it, it's using like a frequency, so it just says like Michelle. I spell Jennifer Connelly on a calculator. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. What? It goes Michelle. Like it's using a commercial to talk. Mm-hmm. And she kind of stops and looks at me and Michelle. And like at this point, the hair on my neck is standing up and I feel this like really weird presence. But you don't shave your neck. Well, I don't. But yeah. If I do, it just grows back right, right. away, thicker and fuller. Right. So 
this. <laughs> I didn't know this was a werewolf story. <laughs> no, I, well, I have that too. Yeah. yeah. But that one, yeah. that one I saw. Yeah. Well, you looked at you. Had so two continue, mirrors. No, continue. You got to continue. I know. I you said, "Can I see the back?" And then he went, "Oh." So, so it goes, and I go, "What?" And she's like, "Frozen." And I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Well, that's my name." I was like, "Oh, weird." <laughs> and then it does it again, and she goes, "Who is this?" And it doesn't do anything. Mm. She goes, "Who are you?" And it doesn't doesn't do anything. So we're just kind of like standing there, and I'm like, "I don't know." And then it just goes, "Dad." Mm. And she goes, "Dad," and she goes, "Is this really my father?" And it nothing, nothing. This is really my father, Dad. Hmm. Nobody's up here. It's just me and her. Yeah. I'm like frozen cold now. And then it goes, she, she goes, okay, well prove you're my dad. And like her, her husband comes in like right as this happens and it plays an ad for big boy and she starts bawling. And I'm like, because I mean, they still do have unbelievable prices that moves me as well. Well, <laughs> I've often been moved to tears yeah. by their onion rings. Yes. <laughs> so good. Um, so she starts crying her eyes out. And I'm like, what the? F and uh, <laughs> so I can't figure. I go, what? What is it? And her husband goes, her dad used to take her to Big Boy every Friday when she was a little girl. Cheap dad. I know, but <laughs> and she's like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What? Like she's like crying, and like everybody's still downstairs, and then it just says, I love you. Hmm. And then now she's bawling her eyes out. I'm just sitting there, very uncomfortable. <laughs> Should I leave? And then, Seems like, like the, a the rest moment. of the... Yeah, it really was like, I'm like, yeah. oh, man, this is weird. <laughs> and then the family comes upstairs. Now, I granted, feel like the third ghost. Yeah, it's... Well, now everybody comes upstairs. Now, could it have been rigged to trick me? Sure, maybe. Sure. But it really didn't feel it. Like, I felt something. It was strange. I've never felt anything like it before. And then everybody comes up from the basement. And I'm just sitting there frozen, and even my friend Mike's like, "Dude, you all right?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know what I, I just saw. I, I don't know what." I, and then I'm like telling them in the car, and they're like, "Well, we just saw like a faucet turn on and some movement, you know." And I remember I got home that night, and uh, I mean, hold on a second, that's still a pretty big deal. Uh, faucet yeah. to turn on. I was gonna say like that yeah. actually requires mechanics, like something that like happened. That. Yeah, that did happen. I was right. downstairs when that happened because it scared the crap out of me, but it was also weird oh yeah so i forget this part so i look at a picture of her dad and i saw the flash myself it's a mustache man with eagle. an eagle tattooed on him oh he had an eagle tattoo I, so i'm dead serious so and white, i saw this white what? i'm not kidding so i go i i Good firmly story. believe there is life after death because that happened to me that day firmly sure, believe yeah. Unfortunately for that guy, life after death is sitting around a shitty abandoned Detroit house. Well, <laughs> waiting. Well, maybe he's falling. Sure, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's. I'm not saying that his life is good. Right. No. He's a dead man <laughs> trapped in a in a bungalow. Yeah, he'd rather be sent to hell. <laughs> right. I mean, well. I mean, well, effect right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on his way. <laughs> but also, I remember honestly. I went. I went home and um, and uh, my wife was there and she's like, Dude, "Would you see a ghost?" You know. And I was like, "Yeah, I, I, kinda." Yeah. She goes, what? what? She's like, All right, was you freaked out? And I'm like, no. I, I, It was like one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, and I would love it if my dad came and said, I love you. Oh, well, now you have to yeah. get a yeah. Well, no, but I was saying regardless of if, if it was a, yeah. a a demon from hell, it was yeah. a very lovely message. Well, I just and, hope uh, my dad comes back, he doesn't beat me. Well, yeah, I mean, if... Just go, like old times. No! Yeah. I don't well, no, want, it's, my, it's, I don't it's, want uh, my mom Pick to your wooden spoon. <laughs> Yeah, unmedicated it, bipolar disorder. <laughs> yeah, what Dave didn't hear next was just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> no, but that's honestly that's my ghost it's story. <laughs> I've told it on other shows, and that's honestly what happened. Wow, and that is the day that I undeniably know that there's some in my in Life my. I felt something that I've never felt since. Well, Honest I will say, God, in that room. And I look, and I far be it from look. There, most of the time, I will say, there's usually a reasonable explanation, especially in a lot of these haunted houses. Yes. The yeah. Cameras there. They're trying to trick people. So I can't say whether that did or did not happen. To 
And I'm not saying because I don't believe you. I'm saying you couldn't know. No, you know many I mean? people have said because it was a TV show, don't you think? But it's like there was nobody recording me. Right. But that's one of the easiest things to do is to, you know, play Mess with, with the radio, radio and, and all that. You do that. Yeah. And then you do something on camera that maybe is a little bit less severe and someone reacts in a more big I, way. I very well could have. It could have been tricked, but it just. It the didn't. Fla- it. The flash I saw. Yeah. And the feeling I got was very authentic. Right. And I, okay, let's assume that no one was pulling any tricks. I think Gerald can explain what it is that he means by that, that, uh, that uh, very likely, according to the Christian faith. Right, yeah. That so, would not actually be a dead father. No, I, so that's why, and, and even in Scripture, there's a prohibition um, in ancient Israel for trying to consult with the dead. So this is prior to Christ. And this is something that I told him, and I'm not going to get too far in the weeds, but there is no coming back. Right, there is right. no sending your spirit back. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, is what Scripture tells us. And so that means that once you die, there is no like, "Hey, I'm hanging out here." And I know we have a lot of Catholic people. There's a point even of if purgatory, even if purgatory, I, I have disagreements on that. But even if that's a thing, you're not coming back. Your spirit is not coming back to earth. There's a story that Jesus tells about a, a, a rich man and Lazarus, and he talks about him like, "Hey, can and, and I'll." Fast forward to it. These both people are dead. He says, can you send somebody to warn my family? And he's like, no, we're not. That's not how this works, right? right. And he tells a, a little bit more of a broad story. The tale is a little bit different. But it's not like they are going back. So that only really leaves the other part where throughout Scripture, it talks about kind of these this unseen war. And there was actually a place in Scripture where a prophet was being pursued by an enemy. And his, his kind of helper comes out of the house and sees the hillside surrounding. And he comes back in. And he's like, oh, my gosh, you've got you've to come out like these guys are here. And this is one of those stories that just makes the hair, like you said, Dave, kind of stand up on the back of your neck. I have a feeling out. now, like even remembering. Yeah. And yeah. you walk. he walks outside with the prophet. And the prophet says, don't worry. There are more that are for us than are for them. And, and then he prays. And he said, Lord, let him see what I see, basically. And he sees the hillsides filled with the army of God. And this is a this is a story. This is not an allegory. This is one of those places where it gives you details about right. what's going on. And he's like, you need to understand that there is something else after this, but it's not your relatives doing this. This is the army of God protecting us. This is the protection that we have. Don't worry about this physical army you can see. And so there, there are tons of things like that in scripture that let you know, like, hey, there is stuff that is going on after this, but it's not, it's this unseen war. It's not your family. It's, it's yeah. good and evil. And so when you see things like this, the natural thing is to be like, okay, look, wh- God doesn't typically act this way. Well, so and there is a theological argument is? that it, you know, ha- causing people to believe that they're interacting with a dead relative would drive a wedge between them and God because they're believing something that God says, well, no, you're not coming back. In other words, God would That's the best way. You. That That is the best way to- Because then a lot of people a, a, try and pay in. attention to someone who's dead and communicate with right. them and you know, effectively idolize that. That's why Christians right. believe that. And well, and that's also really what the clear. shows are about as well. As a what? That's really what those shows are about as well is the- Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Idolizing about, the idea of right, exactly. And the spirit. truth is, you can't like I've always said this. To you, people say just theological as a Christian, they go, "I know my dad's watching, looking down at me." No, he's not. No. Uh, Thank angels, God. Angels were not human. <laughs> 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 I masturbated. <laughs> <I know. laughs> angels are not. We're not humans. That's something people understand. Angels right. weren't just humans who got their wings, despite what uh, Jimmy Stewart tells you. A lot of these things that people get wrong, but it's also something that we can't really fully comprehend. So when people right. say, "I know my dad's looking down," uh, uh, you know, down at me from heaven. No, you're basically the concept of time that we have in a linear fashion. I always tell people like that's not true. And they go, "Well, how no. could you say that?" I go, "Because your dad or your grandfather is going to walk through those gates at the same time as you. He's not missing you, no. and you're not going through this period of missing him. All of this pain is forgotten. It doesn't exist anymore. Like we seven try seconds or something. Yeah, something like, like the like big get. Yeah, I have no idea. It depends on how long the line is. Yeah, it depends on how long day. if you get your speed pass. Oh, if it's yeah. for heaven these days, I, uh, I assume it's not very long. I, mean, I don't know, but I know that if you. <laughs> It's like a, <laughs> take a 747 down in the Pentagon, you skip to the front of the line. Not in this religion. Well, tomato, tomato. They're all Abrahamic. I don't know. The point is, <laughs> we all worship the same guy. Amusement kidding. Park. I'm kidding. We don't. We don't. More because my guy Wally says all the stuff that you yeah. say is not the stuff that he actually said. So, yeah, I, I believe that there are. And I, will, I won't get into this story, but I have uh, talked with you about how I've sensed more of like an evil presence in yeah. certain places before where I've got, gone and I've been very uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, but I've never had any kind of a super... And you know what? I know that if I were to have some kind of a supernatural interaction like that, mm-hmm. 
I actually know for me, and I've always sort of looked at it this way because I, I'll have a lot of people, you know, I know maybe they speak in tongues, or maybe they have some of these interactions, they feel something like the spiritual moment is just, oh my gosh. For me, faith is a real struggle. And I'll leave on this. Faith genuinely is a struggle because I constantly try and, you know, reason and, and look and say, okay, how does this actually work? Or if there are parts of the Bible that I find are kind of hard to reconcile, I go, well, you know what, this is, a, this is a problem. And it takes me a while to research. And I look at history and I try and look at the records and I try and read from scholars. And I'll ask sometimes Gerald for, uh, for some information from Christian apologists. If I feel like there are unanswered questions, I know the way my brain works. And sometimes I go like, ah, uh, there's doubt. Anyone who says there isn't doubt is lying. And I do know for me that if I at any point experienced some supernatural, completely inexplicable spiritual event, it would remove the capability for me of doubt in the yeah. future. And you know what? God wants me to live in faith because at a certain point I live with that doubt and choose to conquer it. Anyway, and for some people, that's not necessarily the case. How many people do you know who have had these crazy supernatural experiences and they're going like, yeah, but you're smoking crack and banging another guy's wife. Like, well, you know, the ghost story was a while ago. Well, you're not that far from it. <laughs> if that were me, it would remove all doubt. And then I know it's no, longer, it's no longer faith at a certain point, right? Faith does mean that there's a certain component of it that you do have to, at a certain point, take the jump without knowing what's off that cliff anyway. Uh, and so sometimes these experiences, not the word of God, not what the prescription is, but the experiences are different for different people because um, we're all called to live through faith and people communicate in different ways. Uh, that being said, I'm pretty sure that in uh, Westlake, where was it? West? I believe it was Westland. It could have been Romulus. In Westland, I think it was Westland. Dave used a Ouija board and uh, communicated with Beelzebub. So we'll she was wearing just... a Ouija board shirt. Well, there you go. That's a problem. And he was moving the boobs. <laughs> Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.